on World News Tonight. Tough talks. US President hosts his first state dinner with France's president. Tonight, more on what the two leaders said about Ukraine. Changing tides. The Council President of the EU visits China and urges to use their special position against Russia. Sunken Brazil. Widespread flooding has affected southern Brazil with rescue efforts still underway. And colourful Christmas. Athens kicks off the holiday season with a tree lighting ceremony. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. There was a historic alliance as U.S. President Joe Biden used the first state visit of his presidency to demonstrate unity with France's Emmanuel Macron on Ukraine, show willingness to speak to Russia's Vladimir Putin and also assuage European anger over U.S. subsidies. A show of unity from Joe Biden and Emmanuel Macron as the two leaders reaffirm their commitment to tackling a rising China and supporting Ukraine. Addressing a joint press conference, Biden said he hasn't ruled out talks with the Russian president if Vladimir Putin signals that he's being serious. I'm prepared to speak with Mr. Putin if, in fact, there is an interest in him deciding he's looking for a way to end the war. He hasn't done that yet. If that's the case, in consultation with my French and my NATO friends, I'll be happy to sit down with Putin to see what he wants, has in mind. While the French president vowed he won't pressure Ukrainians to negotiate with Moscow. Let me tell you that we will never urge the Ukrainians to make a compromise which will not be acceptable for them. We have to respect the Ukrainians to decide the moment and the conditions in which they will negotiate about their territory and their future. While Ukraine topped the agenda, the two leaders also tackled a growing dispute over U.S. subsidies for investing in green energy. Macron has already made clear his opposition to incentives in the Inflation Reduction Act that favor American companies, which he says puts Europe at an unfair disadvantage. Biden acknowledged that tweaks could be made to the legislation. It was never intended when I wrote the legislation, never intended to exclude folks who were cooperating with us. We're going to continue to create manufacturing jobs in America, but not at the expense of Europe. Macron, echoing President Biden's remarks, said the goal is to move forward together. We want to succeed together, not one against the other. It's been clear this is the outcome of our discussions this morning, and this is exactly the philosophy that I share. And it is the one that we need. Macron's state visit is the first to be hosted by Biden since he took office in January nearly two years ago. Now, Chinese leader Xi Jinping urged negotiations on a political solution to the Ukraine conflict in talks with visiting European Council President Charles Michel in Beijing. He's the latest in a string of world leaders to hold in-person talks in Beijing. In a meeting lasting over three hours, European Council President Charles Michel urged Xi Jinping to exert his influence on Moscow. In what's drawn criticism from the EU, China has not overtly condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine and has criticised sanctions against the Kremlin. I urged President Xi, as we did at our EU-China summit in April, to use his influence on Russia to respect the UN Charter. Kremlin's attack on a sovereign nation blatantly violates international law. Human rights violations was also a hot topic. As well as those in Ukraine, the pair discussed China's tensions with Taiwan, which Beijing has threatened to invade, and human rights abuses against the Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities. The meeting, however, comes at a tense time for China's leadership, as demonstrations ripple nationwide against the country's rigid zero-COVID measures. Another concern for the bloc is improving its trade relationship with Beijing. On the European side, market access remains very open, while in China, several sectors remain much more closed. We need a more balanced relationship with no over-dependencies, a real level playing field for our companies. The EU has an annual goods and services trade deficit with China amounting to around 230 billion euros. 
And just like the rest of the high stakes meetings, the meeting of the OSCE, which is the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, is also overshadowed by the Russian war in Ukraine. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is monopolizing all the discussions at the meeting of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe that began Thursday in the Polish city of Łódź. The Ukrainian foreign minister advocated kicking Russia out of the organization since its decisions require unanimity and Russia is blocking all related with the war. The host of the appointment, Andrzej Duda, has gone further. Those responsible for the crime of aggression, for war crimes against humanity and for genocide must be held accountable. Absolutely. Only this way we can restore peace in Europe and prevent acts of aggression in the future. Such resolutions are despised by Moscow. According to the Russian Foreign Affairs Minister, the OSCE is in the crosshairs of the West. The West has been trying for many years to carry out privatization. And the more accurate expression is raider seizure of the OSCE to subjugate the last platform for a regional dialogue. The appointment will end this Friday and probably it will not serve to unlock the 2023 budget blocked by the Russian veto. Apart from the plenary meeting, panel discussions will be held on topics such as human trafficking, global warming or security in mountainous regions. Following NATO's commitment to military reinforcement of Ukrainian forces have expanded into weapons supply, Russia is calling in a foul. The country claims that the US and NATO are interfering with the conflict between the two nations by helping train forces as well as supplying ammunition. Russia's foreign minister has accused the West of becoming directly involved in the war in Ukraine by supplying it with weapons and training soldiers. Armata. Sergei Lavrov told a reporter Russian strikes on Ukrainian energy facilities were to supposedly derail shipments of Western weapons. We disable energy facilities in Ukraine that allow to pump Ukraine with deadly weapons to kill Russians. So don't say that the United States and NATO are not involved in this war. You are directly involved. On Wednesday, NATO pledged to supply more high-tech arms to Ukraine. The West's delivery of military hardware has helped turn the tide of the war in recent months. Today we will discuss Russia's war of aggression and... Russia is increasingly targeting critical infrastructure following Ukraine's recapture of Kherson last month. The attacks, which have killed scores of residents, have been widely condemned by the international community. Lavrov, however, insists that Moscow remains open for talks on ending the conflict. Rescuers in South Brazil braved bad weather conditions on Thursday to save people trapped by severe flooding as multiple states across the country reel from torrential rains that have triggered deadly floods and landslides. A dramatic moment captured on video as Brazilian firefighters rescued children and their families trapped by floods from rooftops on Thursday. Heavy rains have been pounding the country's south, causing water to surge to deadly levels and triggering landslides. Here in the state of Santa Catarina, the civil defense said some 880 people were evacuated from their homes after rains turned streets to rivers. But many residents were left stranded, awaiting rescue. Local media showed footage of rescuers risking hazardous conditions to pluck people out of chest-deep waters. Authorities reported at least two deaths and one missing person on Thursday. The governor of Santa Catarina said authorities believe the missing military firefighter fell into a river with a strong current. He said search operations were underway, but added the conditions made it very difficult. At least 17 cities across Santa Catarina have declared a state of emergency. In the neighboring state of Paraná, rescue teams worked with a sniffer dog to look for survivors buried by landslides on Thursday. Dozens of people were missing, with fire officials confirming at least two casualties. The landslides have also cut off access to a major port for grains and sugar shipments, authorities said. 
Brazil's northeast is also reeling from the bad weather, as officials confirmed at least one death. Local media on Thursday showed people's flood-damaged homes and washed-away roads in the coastal state of Serhipe. Devastating floods are common across Brazil at this time of the year. Still, authorities in the south said rainfall was higher than what was forecast for December, in some regions up to six times more. Let's go for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Avert terror attacks in the form of letter bombs in Spain have caused an increase of security to diplomatic buildings. The bombs were packaged and sent to the Prime Minister's office as well as several embassies in the country. Spain stepped up security at public and diplomatic buildings on Thursday after a spate of letter bombs. A number of packages were sent to official buildings, including Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez's office and the Ukrainian embassy in Madrid. The Interior Ministry said on Thursday that an envelope with pyrotechnic material addressed to Sanchez had been received on November the 24th. It was later disarmed by his security team. The device was said to be similar to packages received by the Ukrainian embassy and a Spanish arms firm on Wednesday. Instalaza manufactures the C-90 rocket launcher that Spain has supplied to Ukraine. Spain's defence minister said no letter or other violent action would stop the country from supporting Ukraine. The device sent to the Ukrainian embassy exploded after being opened, injuring one official. After the incident, Ukraine's foreign minister ordered all of Kyiv's embassies abroad to urgently strengthen security, a Ukrainian ministry spokesperson said. The Russian embassy in Spain posted a statement on Twitter condemning any threat or terrorist act in relation to the letter bombs, particularly directed at a diplomatic mission. On Thursday, a device was intercepted at Spain's Torrejón de Ardoz Air Force Base, addressed to a European Union satellite center located there, the Defence Ministry said. And a fifth was received by Spain's Defence Ministry and diffused by specialist police officers, according to a ministry spokesperson. Spanish police said on Thursday a similar device had been intercepted at the U.S. Embassy in Madrid. Spain's Deputy Interior Minister said on Thursday that the letters appear to have been sent from within Spain. A source close to the investigation told that the devices were sent in similar brown envelopes. Each contained loose gunpowder with an electrical ignition mechanism that would make the powder burn rather than explode, the source said and were addressed to the heads of each institution. Spain's Correros Postal Service has been asked to pre-screen all similar envelopes, the source added. Spain's High Court, which specialises in terrorism offences, has opened a probe into the attack, a judicial source said. The industrial response to stringent COVID measures in China, as well as an overall slow demand globally, has caused a significant drop in production rates across factories in Asia. Asia's factories aren't as busy as they were. Activity is taking a hit from worries over demand and the fallout from China's latest lockdowns. That is according to new data out Thursday. The Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index for China hit 49.4 in November. That is marginally up on a month before, but still well below the 50-point level that would signify growth. Japan's number fell below 50 during the month, marking its first contraction in two years. And in South Korea, factory activity shrank for a fifth month. Economists see growing risks for Chinese growth, with knock-on effects for global demand. Though Thursday saw reports that Beijing could ease lockdowns in the wake of rare street protests. In Europe, there were a few more glimmers of hope. The manufacturing PMI there stood at 47.1. That is still weak, but up on the month before. Survey compiler S&P Global said the number pointed to a less bleak winter than was originally feared. Cooling inflation may have helped. Data out earlier this week showed prices rose less than expected in the Eurozone. The headline rate sank to 10% in November lower than economists had expected.
Now, mind control and telepathy may be in our near future with Elon Musk's announcement that his brain chip company Neuralink is prepared to begin human trials depending on FDA approval. He's not actually using a keyboard. He's moving a, a, the cursor with his mind. At Elon Musk's much-awaited show-and-tell event for his brain implant company Neuralink, the world's richest person shared video of a monkey typing telepathically as he seeks to begin clinical trials for a wireless brain chip in human beings. The monkeys actually enjoy doing the demos because they and, and they get the banana smoothie and it's kind of a fun game. The billionaire said he expects approval from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to conduct human trials in six months after the company missed earlier timelines set by him. We've been working hard to uh, be ready for our first human and obviously we want to be extremely careful uh, and certain that, that it will work well before putting a device in a human. Musk has also set the bar high, saying the brain chip could help disabled patients to move and communicate again, and that it would also aim to restore vision to people who were born blind. Yeah, even if they've never seen before, uh, we're, we're confident that they could, they could see. The Tesla CEO, who also runs rocket company SpaceX and social media platform Twitter, is known for lofty goals such as colonizing Mars, as for Neuralink, Musk said he wants to develop a chip that would allow the brain to control complex electronic devices and eventually allow people with paralysis to regain motor function. I mean, as miraculous as it may sound, uh, we're confident that it is possible to restore full body functionality to someone who has a severed spinal cord. But current and former employees said Neuralink is running behind schedule, having repeatedly missed internal deadlines to gain FDA approval to start trials in people. It's also running behind competitors. In August, that Musk approached rival brain chip firm Synchron, which received U.S. regulatory clearance for human trials in 2021, about a potential investment after he expressed frustration to Neuralink employees about their slow progress. Now, just after Morocco fans clashed in Brussels, more fans in Netherlands erupted in protests and violent clashes with the police. This comes as Japan fans celebrated after the Samurai Blues staged their second stunning turnaround of the World Cup to be 2010 champions Spain. Fans of Morocco's World Cup football team clashed with police in the Netherlands last night after the North African side made it through to the competition's final 16. Police arrested at least six people in The Hague and several others in cities across the country. At least one policeman was injured. The situation was calmer in Belgium, with minimal clashes and a largely friendly atmosphere. Some fans formed a human chain to avoid direct confrontations with riot police. Last weekend, the country saw riots in a number of cities after Morocco's victory over the Belgium team. And in Paris, the mood has been festive. It's the first time Morocco has qualified for the last 16 in 36 years. They will now face Spain on Tuesday. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Senior British lawmakers said her delegation had discussed defence cooperation with Taiwan during a visit this week to the Chinese-claimed island that Beijing has condemned as gross interference. Washington has blacklisted three North Korean officials from the ruling Workers' Party over their involvement in the regime's illegal weapons development programme. People in China are mourning the passing of the country's former leader Jiang Zemin, who died of leukaemia at his home in Shanghai. A memorial service will be held in Beijing on December 6. Twitter suspended Kanye West's account again just two months after it was reinstated, after its owner Elon Musk said he had violated the platform's rules prohibiting incitement to violence. Chile's Villarica volcano lit up the sky with lava at dawn. Authorities raised a yellow alert on neighboring regions and declared a 500-metre area around the crater as a risk zone. 
And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again on Monday as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with Athens kicking off the holiday season with a colourful Christmas tree lighting ceremony in the capital's main square, joined by mayors from around the world. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.